I think the part of the brain that's most consistently implicated in ADHD that people most reliably find that there's some structural difference is in the frontal cortex, the front parts of the brain. And within that, um, it's the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, the sort of part on the side about here, that most groups find is different in kids with ADHD. And that's kind of regardless of which measure you use. So it's a bit smaller in volume. If you look at cortical thickness, it tends to be a bit thinner. There does seem to be a very consistent finding that that area of the brain is structurally compromised. And then, of course, the uh, assumption is that because that's got a structural difference, does this lead to functional differences? And if you look at studies which use functional imaging to look at how the brain is active whenever kids with ADHD are doing certain tasks, you do indeed find differences in those parts of the brain as well. So that's a very convincing story, I think, for the prefrontal cortex. There's both structural compromise, structural differences, and also differences in functional activity. For deeper structures in the brain, like the amygdala and the hippocampus, uh, the findings are a lot less consistent. Um, most people for the amygdala, which is sort of, you know, a little almond-like structure, sits at the front of the temporal lobe, very much associated with emotional processing. A lot of people, ha some have found differences, some haven't. Some have found, for example, very interesting shape differences in the amygdala, which might be relevant. And one particularly interesting recent finding was that the connections between the amygdala and the frontal parts of the brain might be different in kids with ADHD. In terms of the hippocampus, again, it, it's a complicated story for ADHD. One particularly interesting study actually found that the hippocampus was bigger in kids who had um, ADHD. And the fewer symptoms they had, the bigger the hippocampus, which might suggest that you know, the hippocampus getting bigger is compensating for the symptoms. So that's one interesting finding in the hippocampus. But the most reliable findings are in the frontal cortex.